जस्टिस इनजस्टिस द विनेश भगत प्रैक्टिकली एवरी इंडियन टुडे फील्स सैड अबाउट व्हाट हैपन टू विनेश एट द पेरिस ओलंपिक्स समथिंग अनथिंकेबल हैज हैज हैपेंड एंड वेद इज व्यूज ऑन द मैटर वेद इज इंटरप्रिटेशंस फॉर एंड अगेंस्ट as is to be expected from what um, amartya sen calls the argumentative indian it's coming out uh, incessantly i'm not surprised i'm not disappointed yesterday i shared with you a video on the subject but since then much more much more information has come to light and therefore i thought i should do a sequel to highlight some of the issues that i think everybody should pay attention to <clears throat> first of all let me state my overall concern the overall concern i have is a cultural concern something that every indian should be aware of and should cure himself or herself of and that is on the one hand we swear by merit at least in theory we say that merit should have its due share merit should be respected on the other hand the really meritorious person within the indian system i should say systems feel suffocated held back hindered choked if it is not inappropriate for me to say this let me say this now that all of my struggles in the last half a century including the life and str- death struggle i had to put up with as the principal of st stephen's college it was not because i was meritorious but precisely because i was meritorious but i don't want to bring too much of my personal experiences into this video but i want to flag this very important very crucial decisive cultural issue which we have to outgrow if india is to fulfill her destiny that's the only perspective from which i am highlighting this issue vinesh phogat is today deep in the doldrums precisely because she is extremely enviously meritorious i don't think anybody else has achieved what vinesh <coughs> has achieved and that's precisely why she is in trouble <coughs> now let's do a quick review of what happened to me this tragedy begins not yesterday it began a year ago when vinesh phogat bajrang punia and others took to the streets to demand appropriate legal action as per the laws in force against a powerful man belonging to the bjp camp accused of serious crimes of sexual harassment sexual assault and stalking against wrestlers who bring or who are to bring credit to the nation one of them a minor therefore posco uh, law also coming into application i don't want to repeat what i said yesterday when the prospective olympian athletes had to struggle on the streets of delhi demanding justice for the victims when they were roughed up when they were arrested when they were driven to the utter desperation of even wanting to throw off the medals that they received medals of blood and tears you can imagine the psychological emotional shock in which they were 
But even more importantly, you can imagine the complete disruption of their trading routine. Perhaps many of you would know that for an athlete to perform at the highest global levels, every day's trading is crucial. Not only necessary, it's crucial. You miss one day's training, you go back by one week. You don't go back by one day, you go back by one week at least. You ask an accomplished musician whether or not she or he practices every day. Well, leave alone athletes. If I don't read every day, I repeat, if I don't read at least five hours every day, I feel that my brain has gone back in its brilliance. If you want to excel in any aspect of life, you have to be in regular and rigorous practice. If you want to be mediocre, this doesn't apply to you. But the tragedy in India is that it's mediocre people who decide the destiny of the brilliant people. As in the case of sports administration, a vast majority of people who are in charge of our sports activities are people who are absolutely mediocre. They are distinguished only by their mediocrity. Think of the General Secretary of the, the uh, BCCI, the apex cricket body of India. Have you ever heard the name of Jay Shah in connection with cricket? Ever? But he is the boss. There may be a president, but he is the boss. That's how things happen. So what do they understand? What do they care? So when the prospective Olympics goal, uh, medal winning prospects were out struggling for justice from the outraged fellow athletes, wrestlers, how did we treat them? How did the government treat them? How did the Delhi's police treat them? Who ever paid attention to the fact that these athletes who are to bring honor and glory to the country are not able to maintain their daily rigorous routine of practice? Olympics was just a year ago, a year, a year ahead. Countries that are, really, are serious about excelling themselves at the Olympics level, they take the training of their athletes very seriously. No country in the world would treat its Olympics prospects as shabbily as we did, our wrestlers, in 2013, knowing that 2000, sorry, 2023, knowing that 2024 is Paris Olympics. And some of these wrestlers have to <clears throat> represent the country. Or maybe they thought they could disqualify them. We do not know. I don't want to speculate. So the tragedy began there. But nobody talks about it. That's the reason why I'm mentioning this. Secondly, as an Olympics athlete, she had her coach. She had her manager and managing team. She had a physio, she had a doctor. What were these people doing? Are we to understand that these people cannot really keep control of the parameters that are required to meet the eligibility requirements? If they are not able to, then why are they there? It is not, it is not the responsibility of the athlete. It's a responsibility of these people. That's why they are there. They're not there to have a nice time. They're there to do their work. Oh, now they say, oh, we did everything possible. We did everything possible. Yes, you may have done everything possible within your level of mediocrity. If Vinesh Pogat met the weighing in requirement of being at 50 kilograms or below on the previous day, and she could fight three bouts 
and win all the three bouts against such formidable opponents, how come she couldn't meet the requirement on the second day? Someone has to answer for it, but unfortunately in our culture there is no accountability. An inquiry will be conducted, response, I will be very surprised if responsibility fixed and corrective actions taken. If responsibility is not fixed, no corrective action taken, that is the reason why so many commissions of inquiry are appointed, have been appointed, either they came to no conclusions or whatever conclusions they arrived, arrived at did not lead to any corrective action. I am not sp speaking about uh, 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 um, sports inquiries alone, talk about gen inquiries in general in this country. That is why I say it is a cultural issue. The third aspect of the tragedy, when the coaching staff, the physio, the doctor, the team, the entire team realized that Vinesh Pogat is a little above the weight limit of 50 kilograms, what should they have, what should they have done? There was still something they could have done to at least ensure a silver medal for her. And I am surprised they, they did not do it. If they had any common sense, I do not expect everyone to have common sense. If they had any presence of mind, which also is very optional as far as people in this category are concerned, they should have done some quick thinking and decided to get Vinesh Pogat admitted to the hospital and on medical grounds granted a walkover to the adversary Hildebrandt by which Vinesh Pogat would have automatically got the silver medal. Surely if an athlete is not able to compete, she would not be disqualified. She would still be eligible for the silver medal. Why was not that option thought of and why is nobody talking about it? Surely, surely that option is available. There is no law anywhere in the country, there is no law in any competition including Olympics that a medically unfit candidate has to fight or has to participate. There is no law which prevents an Olympic uh, candidate, uh, an athlete, preventing him or her from conceding a walkover. If you give a walkover, the other person gets a gold medal, you get the silver medal. Now, instead of that, we have made an appeal or we made an appeal <coughs> to the uh, appeal committee, the arbitration committee. First appeal was to allow her to compete on the ground that the day before she met the requirement and that request, that appeal was expectedly promptly turned down and I will come to that in a short while. Now the, there is a second appeal pending that she should be given an, a silver medal, a joint silver medal. Do I expect that appeal to succeed? Frankly, no, I do not. I tell you why. See, the difference between our culture and the Western culture and the culture of developed countries is that they go strictly by the law in force. We are a sentimental people and therefore often sentimental considerations outweigh legal precision. Now I am not saying, I am not saying that this kind of mechanical, cruel, heartless adherence to the letter of the law is a great achievement. I am not saying that. I am only highlighting a cultural difference. See for example yesterday, deliberately I wasted some of my time watching television discussions on the subject because I wanted to get a hang of what people were saying. Practically every television anchor was saying, oh just 100 grams, 100 grams, not even the weight of a smartphone, not even the weight of a, a soap, a bath soap. That's how you think. That's not how people in other cultures think. Even if it is 10 grams, it is in excess. It's not by how much, 
for example if you are a tennis player or a badminton player there is a rule that 99% out is 100% in i repeat 99% out is 100% in what do i mean or what does this rule mean it means that you hit a ball the ball goes and lands on the other court and only 1% of the ball touches the sideline or the baseline that's enough that's a rule that is counted as 100% 100% in on the other hand you hit a ball it goes and lands 1 nanometer just a little outside the sideline or baseline it's 100% out 100% out you can say oh just a little difference a little after all 1 nanometer you have to see through a microscope to realize that the ball is out yes it's out out is out sentimentality don't doesn't help that's the difference in culture we somehow believe that uh, laws should bend according to our likes and dislikes now let me give you a personal experience when i was the principal of st stephen's college one of my students i forget his name now <clears throat> he was the captain of india under 19 world cup team he was a brilliant cricketer no doubt when he was selected by the sports department for not selected but uh, uh, he was nominated for admission it's it's the principal who admits i called the boy aside and i said look here since stevens is not a sports school it's a dignified academic institution here we appreciate your proficiency in sports and games we greatly value your proficiency in cricket and the national recognition you have won but we don't allow anyone to take our academic culture lightly so while you will be fully free to participate in all cricket activities the rest of the time when you are free you must attend classes in college secondly if you have if you need any additional academic help please let me know i'll organize i'll ask my teachers to help you outside of their normal working hours if that is needed the boy never came to be he never attended a single lecture so when the time came for him to write the university examination he didn't meet the university uh, eligibility requirement of 33% attendance so i disqualified him i would tell him there was a massive outcry including the sports minister of the government of india including the then minister for human resource development or education minister mr kapil sibal all the media print media electronic media began barking at me saying that i am a dictator i am cruel i don't care for the sports culture and i am ill treating a boy who had won or under whose leadership india had won the world cup for under 19 cricket i said to everyone at that time look i don't formulate these laws laws are made by the university and given to me to implement and the same set of laws does not give to the principal discretionary power if after formulating all these rules the university had said that the principals of various colleges are also empowered to use their discretion to decide individual cases on their merit or and special needs then i would have exercised my discretion there is zero discretionary power allowed to the principal that therefore you are expecting me to break every law applicable i will not do it and this is what i said to kapil sibal i'm sure he will not uh, uh, disown it then he asked me so what should i do i said i'll tell you what to do you talk to the vice chancellor of delhi university he alone has the power in this case to waive the attendance requirement so couple simple talk to the delhi vice chancellor dinesh singh at that time 
and the vice chancellor who had previously rejected him <laughs> uh, put his thumb impression then the boy came back to me with the vice chancellor's uh, waiver and i allowed him because i believe that that is a correct way to handle the law now the, why i'm citing this instance is this is our typical attitude to the rule of law it's all right to say that oh, we are a mature democracy we swear and stand by the rule of law etc but when it comes to brass tacks we are very keen to break laws in any which way we can this will not do you can't do this you may do it within uh, within the country but this kind of thing will not work at the international levels you have to put your house in order you have to make sure that you have a sporting culture which is conducive to promoting excellence in sports and games whereas year after year olympics after olympics we come up with this question why is it that a country of 140 crores 1.4 billion people cannot produce as many as many olympic medals as a country with a population of 10 million why it's a difference of culture we don't have a culture of pursuing excellence whether it be sports whether it is academics whether it is anything else tell me where is there the culture of pursuing excellence rather ask yourself why is it that indians excel only when they go outside the country as india ever produced a nobel laureate other than rabindranath tagore while they were working in india did amartya sen win the nobel prize for economics working within india or abroad think of any other instance well you can say yes um uh, mother teresa won the nobel prize for peace but that is in spite of everything that was done to her you have no idea about the propaganda the destructive propaganda that was mounted against her. even now you ask uh, people of a certain party and a certain ideology they would say that she was a scandal on india we cannot stomach merit when it belongs to the persons we dislike and i have experienced it in a very acute manner with church circles i was always seen looked at with suspicion anxiety fear because i was slightly ahead of others not much a little bit when mediocrity reigns supreme the slightest sign of merit becomes a big offense i always say that the most insuff- insufferable form of tyranny is the tyranny of mediocrity and i leave it to you to apply this hard insight which i have won through personal experience to various other walks of life name one instance one institution one structure where a person's merit will be tolerated without a his having to lick the boots of the people who have power b who, who is not in the right political and ideological camp i visited a, a, a college a christian college about 3 or 4 years ago and i was appalled to find that the principal of the college was an idiot i'm sorry to say this the fellow could not utter a, a sentence without uh, hesitation and mistakes i was wondering how he and i made a very discreet inquiry and found the person who invited me to give a talk in that college to me was quite a brilliant chap but he was sidelined and an arthur ninkampoof was preferred by the bishop to be the principal of the college he even though he did not meet any of the eligibility criteria so he couldn't be called the principal he was called the disbursing officer but even then the bishop the sanctified embodiment of mediocrity cannot tolerate somebody with any merit because a man with merit will have personal dignity and he will not bend backwards to please uh, the so called bosses by compromising his conscience and his idealism such people are always targeted such people are 
distrusted, such people are isolated, excluded, ostracized, I tell you. And yet, we want all the credits in the world, we want all the uh, you know awards in the world, if possible, all the gold medals in Olympics. Now look at uh, uh, Vinesh Hogart. <coughs> now let me <coughs> conclude this by making a suggestion. I am personally convinced that grave injustice was done to this adorable athlete. And now, of course, belated attempts are being made to pay lip service to her and to you know, express the appreciation that you know we have for her and so on and so forth. People who actually uh, kept quiet when she was ill-treated on the streets of Delhi. I think the least we should do in this case in order to do justice to her is to treat her as a de facto gold medal in 50 kilogram category women's wrestling, de facto, and give her all the recognition and monetary awards that gold medalists of Olympics are entitled to, particularly given the fact that this is her last Olympics and she has already announced her retirement. She is 29. She is going to be 30 later this month. So I can't see her fighting another Olympics. And also given the fact that, and I'll, I have to state it before I conclude, systemic injustice was done to her by the Olympic Federation of India. Now, I need to state it because of the campaign against her, which seeks to discredit her. The rumor mill is grinding, saying that she competed in the 50 kilogram category to have some unfair advantage over others. Whereas the fact of the matter is that she was forced to do so by the Olympics uh, Wrestling Federation of India. 53 kilogram was her natural category, but that went to somebody else, uh, Pankhal. Uh, I forget her first name, Pankhal, <clears throat> um, who is now in trouble in Paris for allowing her accreditation card to be misused by her sister and her accreditation has been cancelled. Now, obviously, there's a ground on which uh, she was preferred to, uh, to uh, Vinish, Vinish Pogat. Uh, she won a bronze medal in the World Championship. Therefore, she was entitled to direct qualification for Paris Olympics. But Vinesh Pogat demanded or requested a trial against her. She had, it was in her right to ask for a trial and to prove that she is a better wrestler than the other girl. She was denied that opportunity. It was her, it was her right. She had the right to demand it. She demanded it. It was not allowed. And by doing so, the Wrestling Federation of India, whose uh, track record we know through Bridge Poosh and Sharan Singh, a tremendous promoter of Indian wrestling. The Federation forced her against her will to compete in the lower category. It was not her choice. She was left with no option but to fight in that category. The other option was to be out of the Olympics team. Naturally, a person who has put in about 20 years of her life into wrestling will certainly accept the second best. Knowing what a tortuous thing it is. You know, athletes have died by trying to go through this kind of routine of weight reduction. Sudden fluctuations in weight, which is, as any doctor will tell you, life-threatening. So these athletes are made to risk their life in order to bring some glory to the country. Then we treat them like this. There's a height of injustice. At least to compensate for this absolutely inexcusable injustice inflicted on an adorable athlete. I demand that she be treated as a de facto gold medalist. And all the awards, recognitions, titles, respect due to an Olympics gold medal winner be extended to her. 
and that she also be conferred at least an Arjuna award, if not a Kale Ratna award. There's a minimum we can do in order to wash our conscience clean a little bit. Anything short of this is grossly unfair. All the statement of sentimental solidarity with her adds up to nothing. And I say it again, I have a little hope that her appeal for a joint silver medal will be conceded by the appellate body because, as I said earlier, in these cultures, cultures of developed countries, cultures of Western countries, the rule of law is genuine. Uh, Boris Johnson had to resign as the Prime Minister of India for taking a little liberty with the COVID regulation. regulation. Can you imagine such a thing happening in India? Is it ever possible? That's the difference. It's because of that difference that I'm not very hopeful. If it comes through, I'll be the happiest person in the world. But uh, knowing as a little as I do of the commitment to the rule of law in Western cultures and how seriously rules and regulations are taken in them or by the representatives of these cultures, I have to say that I have a little hope. But it is well within our, our, our power to co compensate for all of this, knowing that all the three bouts she won, she won within her weight category, and her team botched it up and failed in con keeping her weight under control. Of course, they can also give the excuse that the conditions within which this had to be done was also extremely unrealistic, cruel. Um, in fact, there is a need. This instance underlines, emphasizes the need for a serious look at these categories, regulations, rules, etc. That's another matter. But this case can be judged today really under the rules in force as of now, within which I see very little hope for uh, Vinesh Thogart, sad, sad as it is. But let the country rise to the occasion and make up for all the damage, all the the service, all the injustice done to her. We can afford it and it will be a pity if we don't. And I sincerely hope that we do. Jai Hind.